Honda, already famous as the world's biggest and most successful motorcycle manufacturer, displayed its first road car at the 1962 Tokyo Auto Show, a small roadster with an air-cooled four-cylinder engine. At about the same time, Honda's Formula One effort was hitting full stride. It peaked when Richie Ginther drove the shrieking V12 Honda Formula One car to victory in the 1965 Mexican Grand Prix. This was just a taste of things to come, as Honda's competition record in Formula One during the late 80s was unmatched. Their technical leadership in the design of both V10 and V12 engines earned them numerous victories and a reputation for building some of the most advanced racing machinery to date. It was a logical next step to enter the exotic car market by playing off its strong reputation in Formula One. In preparing to build the NSX, Honda constructed one of the most technologically advanced manufacturing facilities in the world in Tochigi, Japan. In 1991, this plant started building the NSX, the world's first series-produced sports car with an all-aluminum frame and body. Mazda's introduction of the RX-7 in 1978 was thought by many to be the most significant new sports car since the Datsun 240Z. It was a high-quality, affordable sports car with good performance, reasonable fuel economy, exciting styling, and for a two-seater, generous interior room. It was also the only sports car sold in the North American market powered by a rotary engine. The RX-7's twin rotor Wankel engine has remained essentially unchanged over the years except for increases in power and the addition of turbochargers. The 1986 through 1992 cars received semi-trailing arm independent rear suspension and a body style criticized for looking too similar to a Porsche 944. However, a radical redesign was delivered by Mazda in 1993 with an entirely new chassis with the emphasis placed on lightweight and agile handling. Perhaps one of the most attractive cars on the road today, the new RX-7 is considered by many to be an affordable exotic without the penalties of temperament and price associated with other such cars. The origin of the Supra dates back to 1971 when Toyota introduced the Celica as an economical four-cylinder sports coupe. It was eight years later that Toyota decided to create a new, more powerful version of the Celica outfitted with a 2.6 liter inline six power plant derived from the Cressida's engine. The new model, called the Supra, enabled Toyota to better compete with other popular economy-minded sports cars such as the Mazda RX-7 and Nissan 280ZX. The Supra underwent rather conservative body style and mechanical changes through its next two generations. But in 1993, Toyota unveiled a radical redesign. The new Supra Turbo's performance capabilities put it at the top of the pack of Japanese production sports cars and squarely in contention with Europe and America's best. Chevrolet introduced the Corvette in 1953 as the all-American answer to the very popular British roadsters of that era. Named after a sleek and fast Canadian submarine chaser of World War II, the first Corvette was fitted with a fiberglass body and the blue flame pushrod inline six engine. Although the fiberglass body and front engine rear drive configuration have become integral components of the Corvette's design, the body shape, engine, and chassis have seen much change over the last 40 years. In 1990, Chevrolet launched the ZR1 project with a mandate to build a supercar that would compete with Ferrari, Porsche, and other European sports cars. Though the last of the 6,938 ZR1s rolled off the production line on April 28, 1995, the ZR1 remains one of the fastest and most powerful production cars in the world. Although claimed by some to be Chrysler's first true two-seat sports car, the Viper is based on the history of sports car designs dating back over 40 years. The first of these was the 1952 Chrysler Hemi-powered Cunningham C2R sports racer, which despite its limited production run, has been cited as the grandfather of the Viper. Perhaps the greatest inspiration came from the legendary Shelby Cobra of the 60s, whose success was based on a formula developed by its creator, Carroll Shelby. He took British-built AC roadsters and bolted in massive 289 and 427 cubic inch V8s. In 1991, only two years after starting development, Carroll Shelby drove the Viper as the official pace car of the Indy 500. One year later, the Viper was rolling off the production line and into the eager hands of enthusiasts. 
As Ferdinand Porsche was commissioned to design the Volkswagen Beetle well before World War II, it's not surprising that the original Porsche 911 showed aspects of its design, from its rear-mounted air-cooled engine to its torsion bar springs. Making its production debut in 1964, the 911 had a two-liter flat-six power plant that was essentially a scaled-down version of the 1962 Formula One flat-eight engine. It wasn't until almost a decade later that Porsche introduced its Carrera, an appellation that signified its most powerful model that originated from the grueling Mexican Carrera Panamericana road race. This model became the first Porsche road car whose rear tires were wider than the fronts and which had a rear spoiler to increase downforce. Although the styling changes to the 911 shape over the years have been subtle, each mechanical revision has improved on its superb performance capabilities, preserving its status as one of the most prestigious sports cars of the last three decades. Arguably the most victorious and longest lasting competitor in automobile racing history, the Ferrari Mark owes its success to Enzo Ferrari, the Modenese born son of a metal shop worker. Along with a small group of close colleagues and talented engineers, Enzo produced sports racing cars that were as beautiful as they were fast. Since the Mark's inception in 1947, a prancing black horse on a yellow background has been Ferrari's emblem. It was once the symbol of World War I flying ace Francesco Baracca. After he was shot down, his parents sent Ferrari a piece of the plane's fabric bearing the symbol, wishing for him to adopt it in recognition of his similar competitive spirit. The earliest predecessor of the 512TR can be traced as far back as 1957 to the first production 250 Testarossa. This 12-cylinder Ferrari had its cylinder heads painted fiery red which led to the name Testarossa, or Redhead. The tradition continues to this day on the 512TR. The roots of the Lamborghini Diablo go back to a small factory in Cento, Italy, where a mechanic turned industrialist started his career building tractors under the Lamborghini family name. Ferruccio Lamborghini's passion for exotic cars eventually changed the focus of his mechanical and entrepreneurial energies. And in 1964, the first Lamborghini production car was brought to market. Called the 350 GT, its hood emblem depicted a charging bull, a reference to Ferruccio Lamborghini's astrological sign of Taurus. The Mura P400, a V12-powered sports car named after a Spanish breed of fighting bull, sent other manufacturers back to the drawing board with its mid-engine design. Although well-received and often cited as the most beautiful Lamborghini ever designed, the Mura was replaced by the Countach in the mid-70s. Despite a difficult gestation period, the Countach became one of the most highly revered and sought-after true exotics. It then evolved, with basic configuration intact, into the more modern-looking and aerodynamically efficient Diablo. In 